Hi, my name is Paul Viva from Origin, and this is my basic champion guide to Varus. I think Varus in solo queue is strong in a sense of if you have a good team, maybe in a sense of you have teammates that don't get caught in roams. I, think I would say he's better in dynamic queue than he's actually in solo queue because he can't really roam as much as other champions like Tristan Fate, Zed, LeBlanc. These are the kind of champions that I like, the solo queue champions I could call them. And Varus is more the kind of guy who is, who is winning a lot of lanes, but he can't really prevent the enemy the enemy of roaming. So you, you obviously you should just try to poke him down, get him into his turret, try to get the control of the lane, and try to get the enemy mid lane turret as soon as possible, open up the map. But as I said, I think he's good in solo queue, but obviously not perfect. The landing phase for Varus is, um, I would say, really strong. He normally wins most of the matchups, even 1v1, even against like champions as LeBlanc, because of the more you can build. How, how you play out the lane is level 1, level 2, or like let's say till the first backing times, till you get your tier, you're just trying to farm up, trying to get as much minions as you can. You obviously try to poke a little bit with the E spell, but your skills are not dealing too much damage and especially your Q spell, the piercing arrow, um, gets the damage gets reduced if you shoot it through minions, so it's kind of hard to actually use it a lot because you can't really push the lane with, without using spells, so you get out of mana really fast. But after you get the tier and you're like level 5, level 6, it kind of starts off, you, you're starting to play a little bit more defensive, a little bit more back, you try to get the Qs always on him and then it just depends on how, how good you are at actually hitting the skill shots. If you hit 2-3 Q spells in a row without even hitting minions, the guy is already forced to recall or eat, uh, drink a lot of heal pods, and you kind of get the full control over the lane. So you, the playstyle is kind of from an AD carry in the early game. It kind of changes to a huge poke champion at level 5, level 6. Probably his power spikes are level 7, level 9. When you get your Q fully max, he's insanely strong. Your Q spell dudes hell of a lot of damage and the only problem Varus has in lane is actually getting ganked. So you always try to you always need to be aware of when can the bot lane come mid lane, when can the jungler gank me? And you obviously should try to ward out your flanks, maybe buy an early ping ward with the tier. The tier is only costing 750 gold, so you should be able to have more gold for that. Varus team fighting is quite simple. It's the same as um, any other poke hero. You try to poke down the low targets and as soon as the fight starts, you try to ult the tank because the ultimate is spreading anyway, so if it's a team fight in a, um, a jungle area, normally 3-4 targets are getting rooted, everyone is getting the 3 stacks of your passive through the ultimate, so your E spell, your Q spell is popping a lot of percentage damage on everyone, but the thing is you should always try to aim with your Q spells on, on, the, on the carry targets which means the mid laner and the AD carry because first of all if your Q hits you will deal like 40-50% of his HP so they're getting really fast out of the out of the team fight and even if they are trying to dodge it really hard or they're like just running out of range they're not really doing any damage so you're kind of trading your damage with theirs but if they're running out of range, you can just queue the tank. So it's kind of quite it's it's quite simple. The only thing you should be aware of in team fighting is not getting caught in the middle, not staying too far up. Because if you get Maokai snared and then LeBlanc combos you with Q ultimate, you are instantly dead. So stay in the back, shoot your arrows, try to all attack the front line and stay behind. Okay, so the first Varus trick I know is. False telegraphing. Um, you can imagine it like you're running towards top side with your character. He's looking towards the top side river, and then you're, but you're aiming for the mid lane outer turret where the champion is, and you just shoot there while you're looking into the different direction, and that confuses the, obviously the opponent. Sometimes they're not looking out for it, or um, you kind of switch the, the targets. It's kind of hard to actually imagine who you're firing at, and it's it's a cool trick that works a lot of times. Okay, so on Varus I'm using on Rats full armor penetration. It's it's just simple. As Varus you want to poke the opponents mostly go armor against you and you just want to have as much armor penetration as possible. On yellows, on the seals, I go HP per level. Most of the time you don't really need armor against like 80 matchups if you play against let's say Talon or 
that you don't really need the armor, you can dodge the shurikens and you can uh, kind of win the early game against them. On the cliffs, I would go 10% CDR per level, so that means 6 times the scaling CDR. And then you can decide between having 3 times magic resistance flat, 3 times magic resistance like um, per level. It kind of depends on what you like more. I normally always take the magic resistance flat. And on the crins, I take 3 times AD just for like a little bit of lane pressure. You have the armor penetration already, you just need some more AD to like get the trades going, to get better last hitting. And with the 3 AD crins, um, you can normally always get the casters when you're like level 2 with one out tech, so that's really good. About the tech speed on Varus, I don't think it's too good because you're mostly just doing your kind of long range blue build, Varus item build. It's not the same as before when the items were like kind of different and you could get like a last whisper early, but um, right now I think it's really good to go the humors for armor penetration. You mostly go against AP champs more as well, so you have double armor penetration. And with the runes having more armor penetration and AD, you don't really need like something else. You can get some attack speed from the humors active and your passive gives you enough attack speed that after you one kill, you get, uh, I'm actually not 100% sure how much, but a lot of attack speed, so you don't really need it. Okay, so the masteries are quite simple. I go for sorcery on Varus because of the long range poke. You kind of deal most of your damage with spells, so you don't really need the attack speed. It's kind of standard. You go for feast, the lifesteal, the oppressor, because your E spell slows, your ultimates roots, and you kind of get more damage on both of these spells. You get the arm of penetration and the death fire touch because of every time you get a long range Q, you actually see that you're hitting people because of the red thing popping up on your champion. So sometimes if you like Q into a brush, obviously you can hear it through the sound, but sometimes you can actually just, oh, I just hit him and it's pretty helpful. And obviously uh, the death fire touch got buffed a few, I think, weeks ago. So it's actually quite good, I think. And on virus, it's just like, the, the best summon as well you can take. In the cunning section, I go for savagery just to get better last hitting and getting camps faster. Obviously, the cookie I'm trying out right now going meditation instead of merciless on virus because you kind of need a lot of mana and you kind of need a, a mana regeneration. So, I think meditation can be quite good on him. Plus, as virus, you're poking a lot of times people from high, high HP, so the merciless normally doesn't help you too much because it only pops if they are below 40% HP and so I'm, I'm right now trying that out. I think it can be really good on Varus. So you have uh, two options as Varus on level 1. 80% of the times I would probably take the E spell because it's just safe poke out of kind of like a longer range. You can use it for getting one to last hit and getting it on the enemy opponent because you slow him and you deal like I think it, oh, kind of the, the same damage as one auto attack, so it's kind of fine. It has kind of a high CD, so normally the Q spell deals more damage. So that's the point when I say the, the other twenty percent of the times I would take the Q spell because if you can get a good ward on the lane, which he doesn't see um, before the minion spawn, and he's just running simply to the lane, the, the, he's trying to auto attack the minions, and you're staying behind the wall and you can get one good Q already, you will deal at least like 20% of his HP instantly with starting the lane. So you kind of push the minions, you push, you deal a lot of damage to him and you pop the death fight touch. So if you can get a good Q fully charged on level one, I would always go for the Q. If you don't think you can manage to do that or you think it's too hard to actually hit it, I would probably just always go for the Easter because it's a safer version. On level two, you normally take in every case, you take the W. First of all, for last hitting, for better trading, you just deal more damage with your auto attacks, so that's pretty good. And you can pop up with your other spells that you took on level 1. And then afterwards, level 3, you took the spell that you didn't take. And then it kind of just pretty much is always the same. You max Q, you second max E spell. Every time you get ultimate, you ult, then last thing, your skill is the W. Um, so the summoners options you have on Virus are quite high. You can go for, if the enemies have a lot of CC, let's say they have a Sejuani Jara, I would go for the cleanse, just because she cannot, she has always a pressure on you with her ultimate, she can always stun you even from long range, so it's just a good summoner to have in your backpack. Other than that, you can go for the heal, 
for better 2v2 and laning phase because you can run away, you can heal for like even your 1v1s. It's good to have it in the 2v2 because you can heal your jungler as well. Then you can go exhaust against assassins, specifically against like LeBlanc, Zed, maybe even Fizz. Then there's some sp specific situations where you can go ghost and flash. That's like kind of the, I guess, ideal scenario because Varus is really immobile, so having ghost flash is really, really good for him. But it's kind of difficult at the same time to get a ghost flash because normally you play against an assassin or you play against a, against a champion where you need to heal, you need to exhaust, or you need to cleanse. But if actually the scenario is given, you don't play against an assassin, you don't need to cleanse, I would probably just go for the ghost flash because it's the best. So the starting item on Varus is Corruption Potion. I normally always take it. I don't think there's any scenario where I don't take it over the, the Doran's Blade. So that's kind of the pretty much go for. And you pretty much just try to get your tier as soon as possible. And then afterwards you kind of um, change up your item builds. If you play against the LeBlanc Fizz, I, I will try to rush the Hex Drinker. If I play against um, a Zed, it depends on the backing times. If you're back with 875 gold, I would take a, I pick up the pickaxe. If I back with 1,100 gold, I would buy the uh, one of the parts of the humus, probably the one with the armor penetration. You kind of need to get used to what your backing times are, how much gold you can get or reach till you're backing. But the three core items are getting the mana immune, humus, the CDR boots, and then you can get the more against APs because it gives you armor penetration and it just, it's just a really good item. So even if you play against AP top jungler, I would still get it. Even when you're playing against AD mid lane, it doesn't matter. I would just pick it up. Then you have four items already and then you can decide between BT, Infinity Edge or Death Stance. It kind of depends on your preference. I normally like to have the Death Stance because it gives a lot of AD. And then I normally pick up the Infinity Edge because in the kind of late game fights, having the mana immune on fully stacked and maybe getting one kill in a team fight, you can get a lot of uh, all attacks out. And if you crit with Infinity Edge and mana immune active, it deals a hell of a lot of damage. Thanks for watching this basic jamming guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lolclass.com.